Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support, please subscribe. The real cause of death of Henry Stuart, Lord Darnley, Mary Queen of Scots' husband. One of the most interesting figures of the Tudor period is Mary Queen of Scots. She is remembered today for being the great threat to the throne of Elizabeth I, and how she was brutally executed inside the walls of Fotheringhay Castle. However, her love life was rather diabolical, and one of her greatest flaws were the marriages that she had. These caused a great deal of animosity in Scotland at the time, but what happened to her second husband, Henry Stuart, Lord Darnley, was unbelievable. After being married for around two years, Darnley was found murdered in incredibly suspicious circumstances. Darnley himself was the eldest surviving son of Matthew Stuart, the fourth Earl of Lennox, and he descended from Tudor royalty. His grandmother was Lady Margaret Tudor, the daughter of King Henry VII of England, and the widow of James IV, the King of Scotland. He was born in Leeds in Yorkshire in around 1545, and his upbringing was rather different. After the wars of the rough wooing, Matthew Stuart sided with the English king, Henry VIII, and because of this, the family's estates were forfeited and his father went to England to live in exile for 22 years. Henry knew he was from a high profile family and as a boy, he received a good education and he was said to have been a strong and skilled young man. He was close to the line of succession to the crown of England after Queen Elizabeth, but he was not as close to it as Mary Queen of Scots. Mary Queen of Scots at the time had been living in France and returned to Scotland following the death of her first husband, the French King Francis II. Darnley's mother had for some time tried to facilitate a marriage and an agreement between her son and Mary, who was four years older than him. Following Francis's death, Darnley was sent to France to meet the widowed Queen of Scotland, and during their first meeting, nothing really occurred. When Darnley returned to Scotland to travel with his father, he and Mary grew closer. At first, he was part of a large group of men who wished to try and take the Queen's hand in marriage. However, in April of 1565, after being part of Mary's court for a short while, he became very sick. At Stirling Castle, he contracted measles, and Mary the Queen nursed him back to health. And when he recovered, the Queen had fallen head over heels in love with Lord Darnley. He was a tall and attractive man, and their marriage took place on the 29th of July 1565, in the chapel of the palace of Holyrood House in Edinburgh. The match caused outrage between Mary and her advisers, including the influential John Knox, the religious reformer, and also James Stuart, the first Earl of Moray, Mary's half-brother. Queen Elizabeth of England also was furious with the marriage and ordered him and his father to return to England. They disobeyed this, and it's bizarre as to why Elizabeth was furious, as she even gave Darnley permission to travel to Scotland initially. Mary wished to marry Darnley quickly, and rushing this through, she didn't receive special permission to marry from the Pope, which was required due to the fact they were related. Their marriage initially was happy, but shortly after Mary became pregnant in the autumn of 1565, Darnley quickly became very annoyed with the fact that he had been given the title of King Consort. This angered him greatly, as he wished not to just be a consort with no real legal power, he wished to be the King of Scotland outright, with all of the authority that a king should possess. He was not willing to sit in the shadows and act merely as an advisor. He believed he had royal blood and he should wield and possess more power than his wife. And because of this, he grew incredibly dissenting. Mary soon learnt that her new husband was arrogant and unreliable and very unpopular with her nobles and advisers. He was also known for being rather violent and physical, including hitting the Queen, which was made worse when he drank alcohol. Mary continued to refuse to appoint Darnley the successor to her if she died childless, and Darnley was furious. This rage was encapsulated by the murder of David Rizzio, the Queen's private secretary. On the 9th of March 1566, Darnley, along with a number of his friends and nobles whilst the Queen was six months pregnant, brutally murdered her closest adviser. Some accused Mary of having an affair with the flamboyant David Rizzio, and rumours were around court that Rizzio was father to the heir to the throne. He was stabbed 56 times and left to die all whilst the Queen was screaming. It was clear that Darnley was behind the murder 
and Mary could no longer trust her husband, and he was hated even more. When their son, the future James VI of Scotland and James I of England, the successor to the throne was in place, the royal couple continued to have marriage issues. Darnley began to drink heavier and alienated people and was still obsessed with the fact he believed he should be the king outright. However, within a year of the murder of David Rizzio, Lord Darnley himself would find himself dead in a bizarre and incredible circumstance. At the start of 1567, Darnley was taken ill in Glasgow from suspected syphilis, which he picked up possibly from visiting prostitutes. Mary went to see him and they returned to Edinburgh, and Darnley was taken to the provost house attached to a church called Kirker Field. Just inside the walls of the city, the house was owned by Robert Balfour, whose brother was a councillor of the Queen's. He was taken there to recover, and at the time, because no one knew what caused his illness, he was left there to recover to ensure he did not come into contact with his baby son, the future king. On the 9th of February, Mary visited her husband in the evening, and then returned to the palace of Holyrood House. However, what happened next was unbelievable. In the early hours of the 10th of February, the house exploded and was destroyed whilst the Queen was at Holyrood celebrating a wedding. The house was decimated and partially clothed body of Lord Darnley and his servant were found nearby in an orchard. It was said that the explosion was a force that destroyed the whole lodgings and there is nothing left which is not ruined. However, their bodies didn't tell a story that they died in the explosion. The two bodies showed signs of strangulation and that they were in fact unharmed by the explosion. Because of this, it was clear that Darnley was murdered before the explosion occurred. Statements obtained the next day confirmed strange behaviour near the lodgings. One witness stated how she was looking out of her window and heard 13 men pass nearby. And then there was a huge explosion and she accused these men of being traitors and evil. Another woman who lived opposite said how she was in bed when she heard the explosion and when she ran to the door, she saw 11 men. She grabbed one to ask what was happening and no answer was given. A later memoir would state how Darnley was taken out of the house shortly before the explosion and was strangled to death in the stable, with a serviette in his mouth. He was then left under a tree. Rewards were offered for information, but suspicion fell upon the Queen herself. Other accounts of Darnley's murder offered slightly different stories. One historian states how Darnley had been strangled before the explosion, and it's likely that he saw the commotion outside with the conspirators, and along with his servant, fled the house, and they were found in the garden. It's possible they escaped using a rope from the first floor window, as this was also found nearby, and when they were intercepted, they were murdered, with the explosion as an attempt to cover up the murder. However, the men got out of the house, which confirmed that they had died. Mary observed 40 days of mourning for her husband, but suspicion began to arise. Mary was seen chatting to the influential James Hepburn, the Earl of Bothwell, who was accused and found not guilty of Darnley's murder. Bothwell, along with 800 soldiers, would later capture Mary and force her to marry him, and Bothwell would become the third husband of Mary, Queen of Scots, with Mary marrying the man accused of killing her second husband. Mary defended this, saying that she believed James Hepburn would be able to help protect Scotland. However, this marriage itself caused a huge degree of controversy, which would lead to Mary abdicating the throne and being forced to run to England. There is a strong belief that James Hepburn, the Earl of Bothwell, did force Mary into this marriage. It's clear that the death of Lord Darnley was murder. Someone had been compiling barrels of gunpowder under the house without anyone knowing, and suspicions as to who this was is still debatable. Darnley's murder is one of the great unsolved mysteries in Scottish history, but it's also likely that the Queen may have known about the plot to kill her drunken, power-hungry, violent and threatening husband. The legacy of his death points more intrigue and mystery around Mary, Queen of Scots, and what she was like as a queen. It's fair to say, her greatest flaw, however, may have been her love life and marriages. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.